You're still watching the City of Lagos TV show. Welcome to the Commissioner's Platform. Of course, this is also um, a focus on the different NDAs, agencies in the City of Lagos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a very strategic ministry, and we're talking about the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Considering the cosmopolitan nature of Lagos and the huge population, the Mr. Babajude Somolu government has ensured that women, youths, and the general citizenry are well taken care of. Apart from security and safety, women are very critical to development, and of course, poverty alleviation has become a serious challenge for a huge populated city like Lagos. But what is the ministry doing to ensure that life is better for Lagosians? So let's welcome the Honorable Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Mrs. Cecilia Bolajidada. You're welcome, madam. Thanks for having me. We have monitored your ministry uh, since the beginning of the year. And um, we're quite impressed with very significant efforts and achievements in order to better the lot of women, families, and of course, to a very commendable extent, alleviate poverty. But let's share your experience as the commissioner. What are those major significant programs, initiatives, projects to empower women in Lagos. Thank you very much. The Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation is saddled with the responsibility of formulating, initiating, executing, monitoring and evaluating policies in Lagos State that relates with women. Also, we're saddled with the responsibility of promoting women economic situations and alleviating poverty among the indigent Lagosians. And for us as a ministry, we've done quite a lot of programs. I'd like to, at this point, thank the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Songolu, for his passion for women in Lagos State. Several of our programs before he came into office was done once a year. But since the inception of this government, most of our programs are done quarterly. So you can imagine the number of women that have benefited from such programs. For example, our short-term skills training used to be for just 250 women in a year. Now, for this year alone, we will be training women in about 32 centers across Lagos states. And for each of those centers, about 250 women will be trained. So you can imagine the number of women that will benefit from that program. Already this year, we have done over 2,500 women and over the years since inception, we've trained about 12,500 women in our short-term skills training. We also have about 19 skills acquisition centers where about 20 vocations are being taught. About two weeks ago, we had the 2021 graduation. And so far, about 13,500 students have graduated from those 19 skills acquisition centers since 2019 that the governor came to power. Also, we have a, a Greek farm in Badagri, where we train women in a Greek. We train women how to make gari, gari processing, and also cassava planting. And at the end of each of those trainings, we give them parcels of land free of charge to have their own farms to work on. Also, as a ministry, we thought about the plights of women, the anxieties that women have, and we thought if we don't go out to the grassroots to meet with these women, we probably wouldn't know what their needs are. So as a ministry, we initiated a program called the Women Assembly, where we assemble women from all the 57 local government, different categories of women, representatives of the wives of clerics, the ballets, the community development agencies and the leaders and their wives, political leaders, representatives of disabled youths, and political women. We gather them all together from different local governments to know their needs, what their expectations are from the government. And during one of such programs, 
we realize that most women in Lagos State do not take care of their health. We realize that they do not have medical checkups. So we introduced free medical checks for women. And so far, over 2,500 women have been checked on various medical issues, ranging from their blood sugar, blood pressure, mammograms, pap smears to guard against cervical cancer, and so on and so forth. Also, during the pandemic, we realized that there was a rise in domestic violence in homes, probably because everybody was stuck in the house. And we, we have a department that is saddled with that responsibility in the ministry. At that time, there was a surge in the reports of gender-based violence. So we looked at what those problems could be. We initiated a program called Parenting, where we invited parents to talk to parents. We realized that the focus of parents had been on the girl child. Meanwhile, we needed to also focus on the boys. Most of our boys are nurtured with the impression that they are superior to the girls, and they grow up feeling that sense of superiority. So we had to bring in parents, talk to them, dialogue with them, let them know that they should treat their children equally, so that when they grow up, they would have mutual respect for each other. There are some people that are regarded as influencers. So we invited heads of religious leaders, student union leaders of all the tertiary institutions in Lagos State. We invited community leaders, chiefs, and ballets and obas to a dialogue for them to be able to go back to their various spaces of influence, to talk to people concerning various challenges we have in violence, gender-based and domestic-based violence. Also, as a ministry, we thought about um, peace and security in homes. So we also gathered all the military and paramilitary agencies, the female departments of all those agencies, and we had dialogues with them. Then, we also remember that widows, most women, when they lose their husbands, they lose everything. So we've had several programs for widows where we teach them to encourage their husbands, not just widows, also women. We encourage women to teach their husbands and let their husbands do a will. Because when husbands die without a will in place, the women lose more than any other person. Some of them, the husband's family takes over everything. Some of them, their children, are ne they, they are left with nothing. So we get judges to come in, lawyers to, to encourage women on having their own wills and letting their husbands do a will. And what, and what their rights are, what they need to know as a woman, as a wife, and as a mother. So we've had several of such programs as well. For the benefit of women out there, um, where are these centers located in the city of Lagos? We have our centers in the five divisions of Lagos. The billet divisions, we have our centers spread across Ayobo, Badagri, Egon, Egbeda, Ejigbo, Eredo, Iba, Ibejuleki, Igboye in Ikorodu. We have about three centers around there. We have one is in Aga. We have in Isheri, Itelewa, we have in um, Ilashe, Ilashe is an island. We have in Koshofe, local government, Lagos Island, Mushi, Shibiri, that's in Ojo, and also in Suruleri, local government. And the new one is um, Ikeja, Agidingbe, that's the latest. And very soon, we will be commissioning Ibeshe, that is also an island. Honorable Commissioner, what are you doing with respect to men and youths in addition to what you've done for women? Our ministry is that for women affairs and poverty alleviation. The aspect of the poverty alleviation is not just for women, but for women, youths, and men. The short-term training wasn't just for women. It was for all Lagosians who were interested in the short-term training. We have trained people living with disability. We have trained people living with HIV. We've trained people living with sickle cell. We've trained retired civil servants. We've trained faith-based organizations. We've gone to various communities to train people. 
and we have trained wives of military officers, police officers. We have trained people in the um, internally displaced people in the IDP camp. We've trained various categories of people, not just women. When it has to do with poverty alleviation, cutting across board, money is a major factor. Is there any form of, you know, soft loans, empowerment, cash funds for these people to possibly start up a business? We have several poverty alleviation programs. We have that that we give equipment. We have that that we do four, four weeks short-term training that we also give equipment. We have the long-term that we train, we, they graduate, we try to place them in various jobs. And we have monetary empowerment for widows especially, where they can have soft grants for them to start their businesses. And um, there is this NCARES that is ongoing, where people are trained and then they're giving money to start their own businesses, proper equipment, or they start a business, or they add to whatever business they're already doing. So we also do that. Also, for our students who graduate from our centers, we also connect them with Lagos State's Employment Trust Funds, where they can get loans to start their own businesses. Lagos is a very huge populated city. How are you coping with the numbers? We cannot alleviate poverty of all the poor in legal states. But we will continue to alleviate as much as we can. Since the inception of this government, we as a ministry have touched over 65,000 women in legal states. Our ministry is not the only ministry saddled with such responsibility. We also have the Ministry of Wealth Creation, who places youths, women and men in jobs, who give cash grants to youths and women, you know. So it's not just our ministry. When all of us put our heads together, we would alleviate poverty of the majority of Lagosians who need such intervention. Looking at your mandate, vision, and mission statement, to what extent have you actually acted along the themes agenda of Mr. Governor? Making Lagos the 21st century is the one that we fall under. When you want to make Lagos the 21st century, the most important thing is to eradicate poverty to the barest minimum. So that is what we, as a ministry, that's what we're doing. Help people to be self-sustaining. It will reduce the rate of insecurity in Lagos State and it will improve the economy of Lagos State. To add to the short-term training, Lagos State government realized that the attrition rate of out-of-school children was very high. And then um, we had the collaboration with SUBEB where parents of out-of-school children were trained on various skills so that they can keep their children in school. Those that are already out can be taken back to school. And at the end of every of our short-term training, we give startup packs for them to be able to start such businesses as soon as they end the training. Honorable Commissioner, it is quite interesting to also know that your ministry has done quite a lot in the attempt to better the lives of the girl, child, women, and of course the youth. So we would like you to give us some specific efforts and initiatives in this regard. We have what we call the micro enterprise scheme where we distribute equipment to various people within various communities. We try to target communities where they feel government has forgotten them. We go to such communities to empower them, women, youths. We give various equipment. Some communities where we know that they have cassava plantations, we teach them gari processing and we buy gari processing equipment for them in clusters. We have some caterers who have been using firewood and what have you. And because our ministry is mindful of the climate change, we empower them with industrial ovens to reduce carbon emission to the atmosphere. 
we give tiling machines to some of the people that have learned such skills and are unable to start their own businesses. Microenterprise scheme basically is for artisans who have learned a particular skill but are not able to start their own businesses. Like sewing machines have been given to people that have gone through the training but cannot start their own businesses. We give professional air dryers, photo cameras and accessories, barbing kits, sterilizers and generators. And for widows, because we have some widows in the communities who have not learned any skill, but they need to be empowered. For such people, we give our milling machines, popcorn machines, sewing machines. Most of these beneficiaries of this program have been picked from the Lagos State Social Register, which is approved by the World Bank. We don't just go out and pick people on the streets. We use the social register to identify the poor within the state. Also, we have this program called the Menstrual Hygiene Program Advocacy, where we go to various communities to teach women on menstrual hygiene. A lot of women in the rural areas do not know how to take care of themselves during their menstrual periods and some do not even know how to calculate their menstrual cycles. So we go to various communities, we teach them how to calculate their cycles, and we give them various materials for them to use from sanitary towels, soap, disinfectants, and what have you. We distribute that from community to community, just to keep our women safe. About 6,500 women benefited from that program. Then we also thought about nutritional, healthy living of women. We had this program called Healthy Food and Nutrition Advocacy Program, where we packed food and we went to various communities to distribute food to the people that need balanced diets. And about 2,250 families benefited from such programs. Another initiative of the ministry is the digital marketing training that we had after the COVID-19 pandemic. Because we realized that a lot of women lost their businesses after the pandemic because they couldn't continue to trade online. They do not have the knowledge of the internet or social media. And because of the short lockdown and all the problems of the pandemic, they lost their businesses. We identified such women and we trained them in digital marketing and we gave them Androids, free Androids, for them to be able to market their products online. And then we onboarded them in collaboration with AB Marketplace where they can display their wares online, you know, and then have interaction with other businesses online. So about 2,500 businesses were onboarded with the collaboration of AB Marketplace and about 500 of those such beneficiaries were given free Androids. Also, one of the initiatives of the ministry was um, giving grants in aid to non-governmental organizations that are female-focused. It was a way to encourage them because we regard them as our partners in alleviating the poverty and the welfare of women in Lagos State. So for every year, the ministry gives about 200 NGOs, the sum of 100,000. But this year, we increased it to 250,000 for each of the NGOs, just to support them and support their programs. In addition to that, we had the UNDP Japan grants in collaboration with the Office of SDG and Investment, where about 2,704 people benefited from such a program, which was to support communities who were affected by the pandemic. You know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, some communities were affected and um, they were given grants sponsored by the UNDP and um, Japan and it was through the Office of SDG and Investment. Honorable Commissioner, we want to thank you for uh, these very laudable initiatives and efforts. Uh, to a large extent, this has actually also helped quite a number of women, youths and families 
uh, in the city of Lagos. So can we share your experience with regards to synergy and collaboration with other sister agencies and of course non-governmental organizations both locally and internationally. What has been the relationship really? We've had fantastic relationship with sister agencies like um, the Ministry of Wealth Creation in terms of grants for women. We've also collaborated with the Ministry of Justice in terms of domestic violence victims and survivors. When such reports come to us and they need legal aid, we collaborate with the Ministry of Justice to give such support. We've had collaboration with UNFPA. We had um, the stakeholders meeting on policy formulation with key stakeholders of tertiary institutions on sexual harassment. We've also had um, collaboration with UNDP on various advocacy and sensitization programs on domestic violence. We have collaboration with some NGOs that have shelters. When we have survivors of domestic violence who need shelter, we collaborate with some female-focused NGOs who have such facilities. Also, with um, the graduates of our skills acquisition centers, we collaborate with Lagos State Employment Trust Fund to grant loans for our students who want to start up their own businesses. And then we have the domestic and sexual violence response team, where several ministries and agencies come together, like the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, and our ministry come together. When we talk of rape, several agencies are involved, and all of us collaborate together to eradicate rape in Lagos State. Can you tell us what are the challenges you're facing in the ministry. When we started the micro-enterprise scheme, we were distributing forms to stakeholders to get the vulnerable to be empowered. But we realized that that wasn't making the kind of impact we wanted. So we went back to our joint table to look at what we needed to do. So instead of going through stakeholders, we decided to use the social register of the state, which is approved by World Bank, and also to go to communities to evaluate the people ourselves. And then for us to be sure that what we're doing had enough impact, we set out monitoring team to go back after a certain period of time to monitor beneficiaries, to be sure that what we have taught them, what we have given them is having positive impacts to their lives, and that is raising them from the state of dependency to the state of self-reliance. So that was the initial problem, but we were able to surmount it. Uh, Honorable Commissioner, can you tell us what are the prospective future plans of the ministry? And what would you say are the major legacies you're leaving behind as the commissioner? Our future plan is to have like a direct hub where all that will be taught there is how to make a direct textile designs. We would also have one-stop center where people can come in, buy products to make a direct and also buy finished products. Also, we would have what we call a special center where people will come in and learn maybe two or three skills every four, four months. So that will be People come in, they learn the skills, they go. Most of our centers, the vocations are being taught for six to 12 months. But instead of taking the short-term skills from one community to another, we want to identify one center that will be our special center. We are trying to set up a shelter for domestic violence survivors in Agidingbi. We are putting finishing touches very soon we will start our own center and in that center we will have what we call a vocational center as well where those survivors while in the center can also learn a skill so that when they leave 
the shelter, they can stand on their own to be able to cater for themselves and their children. The joy for me as a Commissioner for Women Affairs is when you see the smile and the joy in the faces of those women when they are doing their graduation ceremony. You see that they are happy living that state of poverty. And for me, that is the joy. The number of people that have benefited from my empowerment program in the last three years is a lot to write them about. If we compare it with the numbers that have benefited since the inception of this ministry, just within three years, over 65,000 women have benefited. That, for me, is a lot. For Lagos, it is not enough, but we shall get there someday. On a final note, what's your word of encouragement to women, families, and to all the stakeholders out there? First and foremost, I'd like all the women in Lagos State to know the Lagos State Government has zero tolerance, zero tolerance for lazy women. There are opportunities out there. There are 19 skills acquisition centers where you can walk in and learn a skill. It is only the poor that can be victimized. It is only the poor whose rights can be violated. Empower yourself so that you can stand on your own if the need arises. On behalf of the women of Lagos State, I'd like to really appreciate our governor, Mr. Babaji Deolushala Sawulu, who has been so passionate about women in Lagos. And I'm sure that is why he was given the E for She governor of Nigeria. On behalf of the women of Lagos State, I say thank you to our governor. Lagos State government is doing everything possible to alleviate poverty. Let us also support Lagos State government to do the right thing. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, take care of your family. Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Mrs. Cecilia Bolaji Dada, has been our guest on the Commissioner's platform on the City of Lagos TV show. But I want to thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Wish you all the best in your endeavor. The City of Lagos TV show will continue in a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs>